Welcome to St. Anton, Austria. I'm Lynn Morrow. And I'm Steve Fudborski. Well, if you're interested in the evolution of skiing, you're going to love this week's show. That's because we're here in St. Anton, Austria, attending Interski with the Canadian Ski Instructors Alliance. Our co-host, Chris Robinson, is standing by at the demonstration site. He'll be along in just a moment to explain what this week-long event is all about. And it's not surprising that St. Anton was chosen to host Interski 91. After all, the town is in the heart of the skiing province in Austria, the Tyrol. And it's one of a string of world-class ski resorts, including Zurs, Lech, and St. Christoph. But not only is the area renowned for its natural beauty, the skiing is fabulous as well. Behind us, from the tip of the Veluga, you can ski all the way down to St. Anton from over 3,000 meters in altitude. And in Austria, skiing is a way of life. In fact, this season, the entire Arlberg region is celebrating 100 years of alpine ski technique. It's just part of the festivities taking place here at Interski 91. As many as 27 countries will participate in the ski symposium. What's that? Well, here's Chris to explain what Interski is all about. St. Anton was chosen as the location for the 14th Interski four years ago, when the Congress was last held in Banff, Alberta. 1991 marks 40 years since the International Organization of Ski Instruction first organized Interski, which serves as an international forum for the exchange of information on ski technique and ski instruction. St. Anton is one of the world's most beautiful and best known ski resorts, an ideal setting for a gathering of over 2,000 people from 27 countries around the world. There are over 300,000 ski instructors worldwide, and Interski brings together the best from each country. Since its inception, Interski has focused on alpine skiing, but as the winter sports market evolved, Interski is keeping up with the pace. This year, many countries will incorporate other snow sports like snowboarding, telemark, and freestyle into their demonstrations. I think this is the way the public's going. We're seeing a lot of young people really interested in the sport, and really our presentation is trying to capture the mountain environment is a recreational activity for the whole family and hopefully something that will last a lifetime. The week-long schedule of activities includes on-snow demonstrations by each participating team, each with a central theme which reflects certain aspects of their ski instruction philosophies. Workshops are offered following each day of demonstrations where the public and other demonstrators can participate in a practical session with those who put on the show. Information exchange is really what Interski is all about. And so the program continues into each evening with theoretical lectures and presentations of special and general interest. Recent Interski Congresses have also included a general theme, which is reinforced in different ways throughout the event. Professor Franz Hoffekler, whose life and studies have focused on the sport of skiing, explains why the environment is an important theme at this year's Congress. This fits very well because in Europe there is a big wave of should we go on skiing, should we uh, abuse nature and so on. And, but in my opinion, uh, men always used and abused, the silly ones abused nature and uh, nothing can be done without nature. So it's much better to learn to protect nature and to use, to use nature to the pleasure of people but to the, to the good good of the animals, fauna, flora and so on too. With many countries' economies in recession and unpredictable weather patterns around the world, issues like the environment and marketing will likely continue to be key areas of information exchange at the next Interski in 1995. Interski is more than just a gathering of ski instructors. It enhances the overall development and promotion of the skiing business internationally. Welcome back to St. Anton, Austria and the world's 14th Interski. It's a fabulous week-long celebration. And as host country, Austria is the first to demonstrate here in St. Anton. And you know, Steve, just up the road is St. Christoph, and that's the home of the Bundesportheim. And it's also where the Austrian Interski team is based. It's kind of like a university for ski instructors. And that's where Professor Hofmikloch has had considerable influence over the years. He's what we call the Dean of Austrian Ski Technique. No doubt this is a big moment for him, as well as the entire Arlberg ski region. Let's take a look at the Austrian demonstration. Well, this is an exciting start for the opening run for the Austrians. These guys are really cooking down here. That's a steep hill. They're really carving it up well. And as a first team, they really have to set the tone for the week. And as host country, they do have more members on their team, which makes this presentation even more difficult. They're very complicated, but well done. Very well done.
Oh, here we go, celebrating 100 years of alpine ski technique. And you know, Steve, these skiers are apparently skiing on the original old equipment. Well, I have to celebrate the fact that they've improved it since then. This is extremely yeah. difficult skiing, and they're, they're doing a great job. Can you imagine what it would take to turn those boards? A lot of hard work. From 100-year-old technique to the latest in racing technique, these youngsters are going through a course of rapid gates that are cut off. Here they are practicing rounder turns, showing how you have to progress to be a little faster, a little better. Now these youngsters are good little skiers, and Steve, these are what we call stubbies, right? That's right, you go from the stubbies to the long gates, like this guy's demonstrating. He's an excellent skier. I expect to see him on World Cup one year. Good edging skills, look at that. Oh, now here we see the Austrians at their best. Upper body discipline, lots of work with the lower joints, the least amount of movement for the most amount of ski performance on the snow. And all you ski instructors out there, notice the outside ski on edge and pressuring into the turn very early in the turn. And from skiing to snowboarding, the Austrians are leaving no stone unturned when they look at ski technique. And this is really indicative of what the Austrian demonstration is all about because there's so much history here, but at the same time, they are at the leading edge of what's going on in the ski industry all around the world, and snowboarding is a totally happening phenomena. It's here to stay. Now we see a short radius skiing formation with the team here. Lots of discipline with the upper body. The work is being done with the smaller joints in the lower body. Look at this, a T formation, obviously for Tyrol, the skiing province of Austria, a very patriotic moment here. Indeed it is because they've just changed to the A, obviously for Austria. They've done a great job in starting off interski. Now let's go to Chris Robinson in the finish, who's with one of the Austrian team members. Austria is the host country, and of course, this is a demonstration that everybody's been waiting to see. I'm with Egon Herziger, who's one of the top demonstrators for the Austrian team. And Egon, tell me about the use of the old and the new techniques in your demonstration. Uh, in our demonstration, we showed a lot of uh, ski history. In the early years, uh, wasn't, uh, not so important uh, what uh, terrain you had or what situation they made every time a big uh, movement and that's uh, what changed uh, move uh, your legs as less as possible ski and econ economically use your energy to ski the whole day the swedish demonstration team presents as the announcer just stated the swedish demonstration has begun very colorful and listen to that music it's exciting it's really getting the crowd going the importance of pressure control and different levels of skiing now, as he said, we'll be looking for their pressure control as they go through all the different phases of their demonstration. And they've gone from long turns back to short radius. Notice the rhythm, using the forces in the turn to control the pressure, taking the skier down the fall line very fast. Very well done. All right. A great beginning to their demonstration. Now, Lynn, as I watch these guys go down the fall line, you notice they drop their inside hand to their leg. It's really unusual. That's a good observation, and I'm noticing that, but at the same time, it doesn't seem to be affecting what's happening down below. See, the skis are still working very well. No problem. Yeah, these guys are hot. Slowing the speed down, using pressure control to their advantage. These guys really know how to turn on the crowd, and we had excellent crowds the whole week at Interski. And here's the Swedish finale. You know, Lynn, in watching them, I've only seen high-speed skiing and short-radius turns. Really kind of unusual, don't you think? Well, definitely race-oriented. A number of these guys are former World Cup racers. I think when we see the Canadians' presentation, it will definitely be more of a traditional approach, but no doubt some wonderful dynamic skiing performed here by the Swedish team. And they were hot. The Swedish demonstration was one of the most colorful and dynamic that we've seen so far here at Interski, and I'm with Shell Ruder, who's the head coach of the Swedish team. Shell, congratulations on a great demonstration. Pressure control, working with the forces in the turn, is a very important part of skiing. How has racing and the success of your Swedish racers contributed to what you're doing with the Swedish technique? Uh, well, we think that this is just the thing that makes uh, the success among the Swedish racers now. Uh, we are trying to control the forces and use them as much as we can uh, to go down the hill and not move upwards and downwards. So all the, all the effect we get from speed, we want to put in speed downwards in racing.
Well, so far we've seen an informative mix of ski technique. And as you may know, alpine skiing as we know it today really began here in Austria. It was the discovery of allowing the inside ski to lead the turn that was the beginning of parallel skiing. The Arlberg technique was created and eventually the Vedel technique, producing quick, short turns. And alpine skiing will continue to evolve, but its roots are in Nordic skiing and based in the Scandinavian countries long before alpine skiing was a twinkle in a Tyrolean's eye. We talked with Norm Kriar, former president of the Canadian Ski Instructors Alliance and member of the Nordic demo team about the effect of inner ski on Nordic skiing. The, the whole exercise of choosing and training the team uh, brings up the level of competence in everybody because there has to be a common level. When you're demonstrating here that you have to look alike, you have to ski alike, you have to be good strong members, you know, both physically and technically. And in doing that, you raise the level, I think, of everybody up to a common uh, platform, and then they go back to their respective parts of the country and work with their instructors, their people, and uh, bring up uh, everybody else comes up uh, likewise. I think what they learn here will, of course, have an effect on the Canadian Nordic technique for the next four years. It's great to see our Nordic team so well represented here in St. Anton. Our Alpine team's on-hill demonstration is coming up a little later in the program. Chris took some time to find out about that presentation of the Canadian Ski Instructors Alliance, and there's a lot more to it than just what we'll see taking place on the course. That's because the CSIA has a theme to its instructional technique. Chris found out about the theme and the team who will present it to the world. Chris? The Canadian team has been training for their demonstration, which takes place later in the inner ski program. Canada's contribution is always significant, so all eyes will be on our skiers when they hit the slopes. Martin Olson is the technical director for the CSIA, and he describes the theme of Canada's presentation. Well, uh, this year what we're trying to do is reflect what's happening in Canada. We're uh, really uh, working hard to train our new instructors to take a more student-centered approach to their lessons. And uh, our message this, this time is going to be uh, showing the variety of things that uh, the new instructor is going to have to apply to get results with students. So it's not final forms, it's uh, looking at skill development. The Canadian demonstration team has been narrowed down to the 10 best skiers from the Canadian Ski Instructors Alliance in a selection process that spanned three years. Those skiers who were selected not only for their skiing ability, but also for their ability to serve as ambassadors for the country and our organization are... Michelle Beaulieu, age 38, is the ski school director for the Mont Tremblant Club at Mont Tremblant, Quebec. Jill Daigle, also of Mont Tremblant, is the technical director at Grey Rock Ski Resort. He's 28. Guy Duquette is 32 years old and the ski school director at Mont Sutton, Quebec. Bruce Eves at 35 is the ski school director at Mont Cascade, north of Ottawa. 34-year-old Don Corbin is the team captain. He's also the marketing director for Sunshine Village Ski Area in Alberta. 27-year-old Doug Perry is a ski instructor at Whistler, BC. Steve Smart, also of Whistler, is 30 years old and is the assistant Western Course Director for the CSIA. Dean Stone, a ski instructor at Blackcomb, BC, is 27 years old. 32-year-old Cam Watson is the technical director at Mount Washington Ski Area. And Dave Wilson, age 34, is the ski school director at Blackcomb. Coaching the team are Martin Olson, CSIA technical director who serves as head coach and works with Martin Jean of Mont Tremblant and Norm Kreutz of Vernon, BC, who are respectively the Eastern and Western course directors for the CSIA. The team manager is the CSIA's marketing director, Andre Derome. This is very important. It's very important for the Canadian Ski Instructor Alliance to be present here and achieve, you know, an international recognition, not just for us, but for all our members. And also, this is one of the places that we do our research, and we, by communicating with the other countries, we find out, you know, what they do for their members at, at home and also for their skiing public. So this will for sure influence our teaching style and what we do you know, in Canada for the next four years until we meet again in, in 95. Steve, the first time I attended Inner Ski, which was four years ago in Banff, Alberta, I couldn't get over these neat little transistor radios. They're great. All you have to do is adjust the channel to receive the presentation in your own language. Well, that's right. As the narrator explains what's happening on the hill, the translators deliver the message in whatever language you need, be it French, German, or English. So no matter what team is presenting, you know what's going on. And of course, we don't need these for our country's performance. Now let's take a look at the Canadian Inner Ski team presentation. 
Like the start of a World Cup downhill, I'm sure these guys' hearts are just pounding. Oh, no question. Our team is pumped up, ready to go. Here they are, off to a good start, and there are a number of teams at the finish area supporting the Canadian demonstration. They seem to be very popular all around the world. Well, not only are they supporting each other, but they are rivals. And the interesting thing is these guys ski like Canadians. Each team, each nation has their own subtle technique, yet they're all very good skiers. Well, this is what we call smooth, quiet skiing the Canadian way. All right, well done. Now here we see a demonstration with obviously three people showing each part of the turn at one time. And the mechanics at this level are very important. Most new skiers want to become a parallel skier. The initiation of the turn in the parallel position, plant the pole, move up and forward, apply edging and good pressure control through the finish. Good basic parallel. And from the simple parallel turn to high speed slalom turns, great edging, great pressure, good pole plants. And this is where timing and coordination becomes much more important. The skier is developing the skill of pressure control. Notice the upper body facing more down the fall line, feet and legs working underneath. Well, this is a funny looking exercise. What are these guys doing, Lynn? Well, they're trying to demonstrate how the skill of pressure control can be developed by use of exercise. Like here, where the outside ski is on edge early and the pressure is resisted. And this is an excellent demonstration of fabulously controlled skiing amongst your partners and still showing all the perfect skills that our Canadian team is so well known for. And this is really synchronized skiing at its best. It's what inner ski is all about. The skiers are not only following each other, turning at the same time, but turning in the same place as we see demonstrated here. It's what we call a snake. Skiing the Canadian way. They were getting a little into racing technique here, Lynn. Nice step up turns and these guys are really motoring down the slope. Yes, and controlling the forces in the turn in these more high speed dynamic type of turns. And the Canadian Coaches Federation is now working very closely with the CSIA, so racing and good skiing all work together. Lynn, the entire team is assembled at the top of the hill. This must be the finale. And here we see an example of the fact that skiing is a decision-making sport. All the mechanics must be executed consciously by the skier. The Canadian Ski Instructors Alliance approach to ski teaching is very student-centered so that as the students develop the skills of steering, edging and pressure control, as we see here, they can live many different experiences on the snow. And with those skills, you should be able to ski just about any mountain in the world. And I'm happy with our team because they're one of the few that took the time to demonstrate the entire teaching progression. It really makes me proud to be a member of the Canadian Ski Instructors Alliance. They did a great job for us. I'm with Martin Jean, coach of the Canadian team, following the Canadian demonstration. And Martin, the guys look great out there. Your reaction to their performance? Uh, the guys did very well. They're very happy. We did a good job as psyching them up before. And then they were all ready to go. I think uh, they, could be, they should be proud of themselves. How do you feel that the crowd responded to the Canadian message? I think well, the, everybody was very supportive. Uh, the reaction right after here, uh, the, uh, the show was good. And then uh, they felt that the, the skiers did a good job, yes. Steve, the thing that really impressed me about the Canadian team was that all the synchronized skiing demonstrations were executed beautifully, and there's so much similarity among the team members. Yeah, all in all, a fabulous presentation by our Canadian interski team.